My name is Amrit Gill and uh, today is 9th of November 2014. I was 23 years old, New Delhi. Yeah, we heard it on the radio and through other people's mouth, but I don't distinctively remember how I heard about it. We knew that a lot is going on in Harbandar Sahib, but somehow I personally couldn't figure out what's happening. You know, it was all like so much is coming at us that it was overwhelming. Um, I distinctively remember that night uh, when we found out that Indira Gandhi was shot dead and it was um, who did that and all that. And um, we were hearing, okay, people are attacking Sikhs and you have to be very careful. And my husband, um, I had a one-year-old son at that time and he was very sick right before that. In October, my child was really sick and he was in the hospital and all. And how we sometimes we get really superstitious and we say, my husband said, okay, if my child will get better, I'm going to do chilia in the Gurdwara. So those were the days he was doing that chilia. He, straight from his work, he went to uh, Bangla Sahib Gurdwara. And when he went there, um, they were announcing that this is what has happened. So we urge all of you guys go go to your homes and take the safest routes and once you get out of the Gurdwara and even in the Gurdwara we cannot provide you guys with any kind of security and please get to your homes as soon as you can. And here we were so worried because uh, he wasn't home and it was already midnight and there was so much chaos going on at that point in time. Um, and back then there were not too many cars in India like now um, so he had a uh, scooter so but he somehow came through different streets and whatnot and finally he got home and we kind of had a sigh of relief that he's home. Um, then my brothers, uh, my, my younger brother and my older sister-in-law, uh, they were at my parents' house which was just uh, maybe 20 minutes drive from our house and my brother called me and he said, uh, Didi, there is a big mob outside of our house and we don't know if we will survive through this. So if this is the last time I'm talking to you, then this is it. And after that, phone lines got disconnected. Um, nobody could reach anybody. And my mother and father were in Chandigarh because one of my aunt passed away. So they had gone there for the poke. And my older brother, <clears throat> he was in Bihar. Uh, he used to tour uh, to different states. And he used to go to this place in Bihar very often and used to stay in the same hotel. Um, he was there and there also a mob came of around 150, 200 people outside that hotel. They said, we know there's a Sardar guy inside. And, but the hotel manager my, knew my brother so well because he was their regular customer. So he took my brother uh, and he put him in, in a room, a very small kind of storage room and he said, you're just going to be in this room, please don't make any noise and I'll make sure that none of my employees go out or the other ones come in at the change of shift. So finally, my brother ended up staying there for almost seven days in that little room. And we did not know whether he's alive or dead or whatnot. So, for the lack of any resources or having very good thought process that what we are going to do, what my uncle did was um, gave a kukri, it's a Nepali kind of a knife, uh, which my younger brother used to collect. That was kind of his passion to collect those kind of knives. So my uncle gave one of that knife to my sister-in-law and he said, if anybody tries come to come close to you, please kill yourself because we don't want our daughters or daughter-in-laws to go into wrong hands. So we would rather have you give this shahidi versus, you know, going into their hands. The night this happened, the very next day, my parents were coming back from Chandigarh in a train. And there was mass killing going on in that train. But fortunately, the bogey my parents were in, nothing happened in that. So when they came to New Delhi, um, like everyone was screaming that there were murders in the train and so much is going on and my father didn't know what was happening so like a good Samaritan he said okay let me help what is happening here so he started pulling these dead bodies and injured people out of the train with other guys not realizing that they are all six he didn't he didn't put two and two together 
And by that time, I mean, we, I guess we were merely fortunate that through all that, our family could survive through. Uh, there was a cop coming his way, and my, he was my dad's very old friend. So when he died, Shaw saw my dad, he was literally shocked that, what are you doing here? So he pulled my dad and mom, and he took them in a room, like in railway stations, there are those little clock rooms, they call them. So he took them there, and then he put a lock outside that door, and he said, just stay here. So it took them, I guess, three to four days from that railway station to get home. So in that time, nobody in our family knew who is living and who is dead. Basically, your neighbors who are Hindus or anybody, they all loved each other. So it was not a hatred from person to person. So one of my mother-in-law's best friend, they lived just in the back street. So she, um, they kept coming and they said, guys, you come to our home. We will hide you in our home. And my father-in-law, like he said, this is what I've made all my life. This is my home. And we are, if we are going to die, we are going to die here. But then for my little baby, my father-in-law packed a, I'm sorry. My father-in-law packed a video back then. Those videos were expensive, like 14 or 16,000 rupees. And it was a big money back then. He made me a bag where actually two bags and he made me try those he says can you handle these two bags and your child so I put those two bags on and because there was a lot of powdered milk and um, his clothes and one set of my clothes and he said if anything happens just run away your baby and these things will have you survive maybe a week or so and then we'll see whatever happens will happen but at least our child shouldn't die hungry you know and then in the evening, uh, we, would, we wouldn't let men go out of the house because we were so scared. So I used to go out to get milk for um, my son. And we are standing in line, long lines, and you know everyone is coming out just to grab something to eat or stuff like that. And right away, people will start screaming, mob is coming, mob, and you just run away, not knowing where you are going, what is happening. Um, at night, every night, and because Tilaknagar was the area where a lot was happening, a lot of killings were done to the point where we heard that they were picking up newborn babies and, you know, throwing them at the wall and killing them. And during that time, you also find out one of my brothers, my older brother's best friend, his name was Amrik Singh. They, he had gone to his in-law's house and mob came there. So that mob put a tire around his neck the, uh, and then they put a kerosene oil and burnt it. So they burnt him alive there. Uh, so we found out about that and we didn't know how many people are getting killed which way. So, in our Rajori Garden area, it's like that area where we lived, like mostly upper middle class people lived and there was kind of security there. Uh, but still we all made, kind of made a pact that at night, these men, Hindus, Punjab, Sikhs, everybody, they would just patrol our street. Okay, and we women, they would ask us, go inside with your kids, you know, because November, end of November, it was a little chilly too, but nobody wanted to go in. So we would just cook whatever is in the home, like groceries and all, and made sure those men are getting tea and whatever their needs are, because all night they used to patrol outside our houses. And the reason my brother, my parents' house was saved, because our house was on the main road, and you know how in India uh, there are shops outside your house which you give for rent. So one of the shop was rented to a jeweler who was Gupta Jewelers. So people, a lot of those guys thought, oh, this is a Hindu's house. Uh, so that's how they got survived. It lasted maybe, I, I exactly don't know, but maybe three, four days. Felt like, like forever. And then the military started coming and it was so scary because on our streets, these military um, tanks kind of vehicles are going with their, you know, 
targets everywhere and you don't know whether they are targeting at you or they are you know providing safety to you it it was very very confusing uh, that what was happening um, yeah it was quite torturous <laughs> here these people we are part of this country we live the, with these people and still your close friends are the same but yet there were people who you knew became part of those mobs in few days later we found out that uh, one of the guy who was our dry cleaner his son died and they are not sardars and then we found out that that he was in the mob and most of the people in that mob they they did not have any um, any motive other than robbing people they were going in groups and they were just robbing people of their uh, belongings so he was he became part of that okay this is the time to you know get stuff and uh, he got killed because there were certain families who attacked back at people too but after that i remember both my families my father's families and our families we always had at least five to six crates of soda bottles in our house you know that was our security if anybody come if you throw a soda bottle at anyone it just will blast and it can do damage and have people run away so that's and we always had some kind of extra groceries at home and those soda bottles will always be there so that um, people got more aware and and the worst thing was that my father said that people who used to be always smiling at you now they look at you differently that was the saddest part well always be prepared for your security and but don't don't give in to those pressures you are who you are and you should stay that way you know i didn't cut my children's hair or I didn't uh, change their look and right away we didn't decide to go anywhere because that's our land and we belong there. It's after um, how many years we came to United States in 1995 because I got a job opportunity and as a unit we decided okay if we want to you know take this adventure and go and try this out uh, but till today my boys tie turban and they are Gursik and they believe in Gursiki and um, yeah, and I shared this story with them and my older son feels that why was he just one year old? He wanted to be part of it and should have done something about it, but he was too young. And, and it's, it's amazing how sometimes we feel we, we, nothing can happen to us or all that. And in my own family, I've seen my father go through in, in India Pakistan partition and we were we used to listen to those stories uh, knowing how my grandparents didn't know where my father was for three months and he was the only child and those were really terrifying stories and then came 1984 and I said wow like here two generations in fact three generations have gone through something so huge you know here my father and my grandparents always told us those stories and now we had this thing which we are going to tell our grandchildren who might not even be able to relate to that but they will need to know